It's often said that the private sector is the engine of growth of any economy. Put simply, what that means is that the private sector and its various subsectors ought to be driving economic progress, aided, of course, by sensible policy measures that promote rather than hinder economic activity. This evening on Plain Talk, I have two leaders from the private sector. They're the immediate past chairman of the Private Sector Commission, Major General Retired Norman McLean, and Mr. Eddie Boyer, who is the current chairman of the Private Sector Commission. Gentlemen, welcome to Plain Talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's truly a treat for me to have <laughs> such people as my guests this evening. Now, the private sector as the engine of growth. Do you think that our private sector in Guyana has lived up to that label, either gentleman? Well, I think that you have to start from the basis that if you have the engine, that you have to put it on a chassis, and the government has that responsibility to put this engine on a chassis so that it will run. Uh, so it has to have a base. And if that happens, then I sh I'm sure working hand in glove with the government, the private sector could be the driver and be that engine of growth. I, I, <coughs> I would like to add to that, Chris, that coming from an economy of the 70s, 80s, where the government was basically the owner of the economy and you know, the private sector, I think, started we in, in the 90s, early 90s, as a young private sector. Uh, over the years has developed, and that they have developed to the extent of, of, I mean, you've seen it, creating employment, looking at, in terms of where we are today. The private sector has grown tremendously, tremendously, and they've contributed uh, in, in all forms, in taxation, in, in, in development of the country, in the national issues, they've been out there. Uh, I want to take um, Major General up on his um, response that the ch private sector is going to be the engine, but the government must provide the chassis and the... Other and maybe the fuel. <laughs> and and <laughs> the fuel. Now, but surely the government's role essentially is to provide the enabling environment yes. to provide the infrastructure yes but thereafter is the resourcefulness of the private sector entrepreneurs and business persons to take it yes forward is it yes. yes. i agree with you but um the underpinning and support services needed to, for that engine to do what it should be doing um we talk about education we talk about air, roads, water facilities, no matter with electricity. Um, it is not a uh, private e exercise at this point in time, but that is where it would eventually be. Mm. But if electricity is running at 30 cents per kilowatt hour at this point in time, then you're not really enabling, you know. Um, in fact, when we looked, when I was doing this, um, National Economic Forum, which the President has asked that we do, um, when we examine what is happening in the Caribbean, a lot of the Caribbean private sector countries in the Caribbean are generating their own electricity for several reasons. One is efficiency, two is stability, and two is e e e the economy of it. And uh, that is happening here. 
DDL, banks DIH, all the big companies are generating their own electricity. So then that should not be a barrier then? It is a barrier in the sense that uh, if you're looking at a green economy, which is what the president is talking about, and which I support 150%, then you have to generate electricity from from green sources, hydroelectricity, wind, wind solar, biomass, all these. And these are the things which will bring down mm -hmm. the cost of electricity. You cannot continue with fossil fuel. I hope that this big oil fine that we're talking about does not mean that everybody now will lay back and we are going to get rich and what have you. That is certainly not the, the model. And uh, that um, oil that we find there should go to export. And we continue to generate our own in agriculture and generate our own ele less electricity at a cheaper rate other than the fossil fuel. And, and maybe you can, you, can well, you, you might want to address well this question of whether the private sector should not be be doing some of that, like like solar and, and I mean yeah, why not? We, it's, we, it's happening. We we definitely uh, in the private sector is encouraging a green economy, and as far as the solar and other renewable energies are concerned, uh, you know it's it's starting to take it's starting to take some effect. But let me let me just let me just add to some of what Norma was saying is that when you look in terms of the cost of electricity, electricity in some other Caribbean countries are subsidized, highly subsidized. And for us to compete with that kind of subsidized Like which country? A Trinidad, Suriname. But you know, these when you when you gotta compete with those countries it presents a, a challenge, a problem at that rate that we're paying. And yes, we, we definitely have to look at renewable energy to bring down a cost, the cost of production. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I mean, let's face facts. Uh, paying that kind of electricity is, is, is hindering all forms, Chris, all forms of any type of expansion in our country. So you can't compete. Can't compete, can't compete. But, but but let me let me, uh, and I sympathise with this. Uh, but I, I I think I must raise these issues. Yet a number of businesses from Suriname, from Trinidad, the two countries you mentioned, come to Guyana to operate, leaving Trinidad, leaving Suriname. They must know the the cost and the barrier well, of, of electricity. Well, you know that. Yeah, yeah. but produ producing what? <laughs> Well, they're coming they, they here. Come here and do business. They okay. come here and do business. business. Yes, they I bring goods. So not, they bring goods here, which are manufactured there at a cheaper price because well, of their cheaper electricity. Well, I, I don't think that's true. For example, of um, the Rosignol, um, the bakery. Sorry, the, the, the butchery. Butchery. I don't. I, it's not true. Certainly, it's not true. Of um, of Republic Bank. It's not true. Um, of several aspects of the of the Marseille group. Do you know, Chris, that is against the Treaty of Chagas? That, that, that anti-competitiveness in terms no, of no, was not anti-competitive. In terms of the subsidized electricity. No, 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 no. I, yes. I, I'm not. I'm not talking about it. No, I, what I'm, I'm saying is, from that now. I, I, absolutely, I'm saying you absolutely, have businesses coming to Ghana. Absolutely, but to take yeah, but you're point. selling goods which are being produced at a cheap Republic rate. Republic Bank is not selling goods. No, they 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 are selling money. <laughs> no, but no, no, no. You are up here. You would always get regional businesses moving from one country to the other. You, you're absolutely right. But the thing about it is that the cost of electricity is definitely, definitely a hindrance in terms of manufacturing. When you look at any time you're producing something, and you talk about the input of, for example, Norman talk about self-generating. You gotta, you gotta buy a generator. You gotta do all these factoring and so. The project becomes <laughs> become sometimes not not viable. But you, you know, just true. Just go into your supermarket. Yes. Mm. Look for anything that you want there, other than rice and sugar, mm. and you'll find that we are competing with Trinidad. We competing with Barbados. I find it sickening that. We get Pine Hill, all these juices and what have you, coming from Barbados and being sold here, milk, what have you, boxed milk, and what have you. We can't do that. 
But well, I must ask you that. Why aren't we doing that? But listen, uh, you you yes. you lament the fact um, yes. that the cost of electricity. You you point out quite correctly the CSME and the revised rate of Chagrin. Why are all business people not going to those countries where electricity is cheap? You, you, you don't do it in Ghana because you say e electricity is expensive. Why not go to those countries where electricity is cheap? I am saying to you, Chris, Move your capital I here. am saying, Chris, let me be honest with you. It's very difficult. Sometimes we entertain, I, I, don't, want to I don't want to sound prejudice. We entertain a lot, a lot of these regional businesses come into Guyana, we support them, and they do very well here. Good for them. But you try going into Trinidad to do business, it's very, very difficult sometimes for Guyanese businesses to go into these things. You know, I mean, to do exports sometimes is even difficult. We had the problem a couple of years ago with the psychosanitary uh, requirements for yes. exporting meat. But Quite these are things, yeah. listen, I'm not gonna, listen, I don't want to sound anti-regional. We just had the CARICOM conference. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to sound that way. I just say to you, you have a young, vibrant private sector here. They have changed the, the whole mapping of this country. What we used to bring in and import is there's a lot of subsidies, uh, substitution, uh, the things, services that we paid for in, in, uh, before. Now people are providing those services. Don't give up on your local private sector. Do not give up on your local private sector. We have done a lot. It's a young private sector. We came from where there was zero import of items to where we are today. Now look at look at the progress. Look at the progress. Well, do you look at the size do of the you economy, measure Chris. Do, look do, at you the size of the economy. do you measure countries' progress? by the amount of, of imports that it imported pigtail and as Norman is saying that well, it imported flour uh, um, sorry you, you said milk yes you fruit juice Juices. Things, things that we have produced in this country yes for decades yes uh, you would say decades but I tell you something let the me take a simple thing like platin chips and James, yes. uh, so, you know, from the Dominican Republic you know, and it's no, selling all over the place that we producing that not a criticism of our private sector not really, not yeah. really. You got here. Let me explain something to you. There are some com countries that go after pr uh, goods and services. There are some yeah. countries go after manufacturing. We, you would be surprised. We have a limit. P people think we got a big labor force that you got all kind of qualified people that could come in and do work and all. That's not true. That is not true. Planting chips, we Soldanza. No, no, no. Let, <laughs> let, them come up they, let them come and see the market demands here and they go open a factory right Packaging. Here. My point to you, Chris, the, the, the employment of people here, right, we have a high migration. Yes. That is the question. Why? Right? You got a lot of businesses. Every day you see adverts in the papers and you say, what? We got a high unemployment. Big high unemployment. Why? We got to address those issues, and we got the PPP, which is the private-public partnership. We got to go to the unions, the government, and sit down around a table and understand what are the national issues, and that we have a problem. Well, Norman just said that he had this, this under his chairmanship, there was this national forum. Hmm. Did that forum address those issues, and, and is there a sustained way forward to... to I to overcome the hurdles that we've you've the identified. The report has been prepared, and in that report, energy is the number one issue yep. in my view. Absolutely. And in fact, if you read from Dr. Suresh Narain, who was at IAST, he says the missing element for Guyana's development, according to Dr. Narain, is stated as expensive Which energy. Is, yeah. That is the missing element that we need cheap energy. Where do we get that from? Hydroelectricity, solar energy, um, wind some farms. of which some of which the private sector can take on. Yes, yes, yes I agree. Yes. I agree. Uh, but they're not doing it. I agree. Yeah. Now let's let's move on. Um, hmm. One does want to. I, I think this is a a ripe got, discussion. Uh, we got to do it many times, but not only tonight. Well, Absolutely. fantastic. Thank yeah. you for your yeah. offer, Eddie. Um, taxation. As 
Philip for Philip for, for, for <laughs> development of the private sector. Uh, it, it can be a Philip. It can be a deterrent. Mm. Wh where would you? Um, there's probably somewhere in between. Where yeah. is Guyana's tax system in terms of helping to develop our private sector? Okay, let me let me start. The previous government, the previous government had. Uh, He's the, the, this oh, gentleman is the author of this thing. Yeah, yeah, but let me let me back up. <laughs> the, pre <laughs> the previous government, the previous government. What has happened with this report? <laughs> I don't interrupt you, <laughs> <laughs> your president, your chairman. Yes, yes, the chairman. I okay. Agree, I agree. Uh, no, I'm only a past chairman. Uh, yeah. anyway, I'm going to answer the, the question. The previous government had a tax reform committee. Yes. Right? I don't think we heard from that tax reform Clifford committee Clifford until Clifford it Clifford was company. until the new government came in. We had a, a, a forum with them. The recommendations was there. Mm -hmm. Right? Nothing was done. Nothing basically was taken on board. Comes to your own here now. Right? You came to us. We sat with you. This is several times. Several times. You see, several times. I was times. a member of the committee. That's yeah. well, well, well. It's not a one. Person I want committee. to say. I, I like to let the viewers know that you did. You did it gratis. That's that you, not relevant. That's not relevant. <laughs> <laughs> but you came to us and you said to us, "Tell us the measures you would like to see in terms of where we go and what what it is and so on." Then. I think we refer to some of the meetings that we had in the, with the uh, National Development Strategy in terms of taxation, how much, so I can't remember if we discussed it with you, but what we had talked about is some of the measures in that previous uh, government, what we discussed yes. with them. And there was a lot of impetus there that would have reduced taxation, but increased the revenue of government, for example, corporation tax. Uh, some years ago, when the previous government reduced corporation tax, they had an increase of over what three billion dollars, mm -hmm. three billion dollars, and they reduced the corporation tax. Governments are always not lenient to reduce taxes to understand the issue of taxation. But taxation all over the world, they found that when they've adjusted and 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 push push businesses and and, and private private uh, uh, taxpayers. Reducing taxes and reducing these this encumbrance and all this, that everything works. People pay more taxes. They do go about their business. They see it as not something that is a big profit or or or, or hindrance for them to go and do. I think the it GRA. It should be an incentive. The GRA has made. I don't want to. I don't want to give them all kudos, but they've made over the years a significant uh, improvement on on, it, on on how they go about uh, taxation. And they've made some. They've made some improvements. You know, if you want to apply for compliance, you don't have to see the big man and the big woman or whatever, and you get these things done. But there are areas here. Coming back to your report, of uh, how much here? Nineteen. We had nineteen. Nineteen items, which and you consider which you consider the, the disincentive, right, Chris? In our fairness. people pensions are not like a pension of the United States or the UK. <laughs> People pensions here they decrease. They're living on that. They, 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 they the pension of, of, of a, a thousand US dollars ten years ago used to look like a lot of pension, but today it's hard for people to live on some of these. On a thousand US? I no. think it guy No, if I were to and I don't want to put anybody in the spot, mm. but I would like to know what percentage of the labor force of the private sector gets a salary of a thousand US a month. I really would love to know. And I, I, I would like you to take that back and perhaps come up with some answers. Um, you raise a very interesting point mm. about taxes and lowering the rate. But the experience has shown and we've seen what's happening in, in, in lots of countries um, where the, the benefits of low, lower taxes are not being passed on. So you have what is called that one Not trickling down. It's not trickling down. So it's, it, there's, there's a criticism, you know, Mr. Chairman, uh, that the private sector is not enlightened enough to appreciate the, 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 the social impact of some of their business decisions. 
You know, the bit. Tell me what, what, what you you're getting stumped. What, no, 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 no. I'm not getting stumped. I wanted to more or less clarify. No, I'm going to back stuff. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Any part of the world, yes. business people would always look for not, they would not tax evasion, avoidance of paying taxes. And you, you know there's an accountant, you know that. And therefore, we will always want benefits and we'll always want more. You know, the cup is never full. And that basically is, 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 is the answer. We are, we're going to come here, we're going to come with something and you're going to satisfy us and we come with something more. But I don't buy the argument that reducing the, the corporate tax rate for the, would, would deplete the, the revenue collection. I don't think so. I, it's not been proven here. It's not been proven here. You reduce it, they collect three billion dollars more. more. That was that was over twenty years ago. We yeah. accept that. Well, do that's, do that's the no, twenty years now. Yes, yes, with the under no, 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 yeah. Well, no, 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 no. We had a recent. We had a, a reduction. A reduction. Mm -hmm. For uh, well, manufacturers, the five years manufacturers, ago. Manufacturers, manufacturers had a reduction. Yes, but and, and that's I think we call it but, the Laffer curve. But um, you, you, as an accountant, you, you see where I'm going. You can't, you can't tell people that you're not willing to, to reduce certain things and so but there is another I mean I want to be genuine that there is another part of it that a lot of the taxes paid by ordinary people people don't uh, this is probably not what you're asking me but people don't want to pay people don't want to work overtime in this country because they're highly taxed and that's an area where the ordinary person needs they need some guidance and on, 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 on looking at the taxation for ordinary people there are a lot of persons don't want to pay uh the the overtime taxes the, the taxes and the overtime pay sometimes is more than what they earn so we have an issue well, there you know i don't understand how the taxes and the overtime in other words if you the more you earn, more the you, more you earn, pay. Yeah, you but pay. you don't. But you play a flat, flat rate, so you don't play progressive. We don't. We. we it's not like you, our day is normal when you pay eighty-five or ninety percent mm. plus um, super tax. Yes. Yeah. Sir tax. Yeah. Well, yeah, but, but I mean, these are these are all very interesting points you're raising, and I, I accept that. And I, I think there's there's need for discussion. Mm. Is the, sorry? Go on. Are we talking about about um, some of the the barriers? Mm. Uh, this engine of growth have these policies led in any way to this what we're hearing a lot about a slowdown in the economy the what's your experiences I, I don't think it's the policies that are causing the slowdown in the economy what's the cause you have a new government there's some uncertainty people are holding back <coughs> they're not sure about the direction in which we are going and these are some of the issues which have impacted on people deciding look I better hold on to what I have and I'm not going to spend I'm not going to do this development I'm not going to improve my house <coughs> because I'm not sure the direction in which the economy is going given the new government but <coughs> Eddie, you want, you've had lots of discussions with the government you would certainly have had the opportunity to, to express uh, that mm -hmm. I think e even if it's a misguided fear, that the fear exists. I, thi I think I think the government recognizes slowdown now. I mean, uh, obviously, no government like that admit there's a slowdown. <coughs> they recognize that there's a slowdown, and the slowdown, it, it, the some uh, attribution to the slowdown is what Norman is saying. But the slowdown, generally, is I think there's a lack of confidence in the economy. I think there's a lack. Of, I don't know. I don't know, per se, if it's specifically to the government or people just, as Norman said, waiting and seeing because they want to see what's well, happening. Is either the government or the private but sector? That, well, you know, Chris, people don't invest for some a lot of reasons. But the thing about it is, if you are not earning the same money, you can spend you can spend more than you earn. You know, they're, 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 they're attributes to that. You got to look and see where the slowdown is and i think this is where the government and the private sector needs to sit down and analyze it and see what we can do to jumpstart the economy for example i can give you one that i think that should jumpstart the economy you can tell me this is a big debate but i think that we should look at the interest rates we can reduce the interest rates now it might not you know it might create inflation but 
If you reduce the interest rates, that might jumpstart the thing to get people going. Inflation only a depending on what the what's the state right. of demand and all of right. that. At the stage, you do have pent up demand. Yeah, but, but, but I want to. Do you know our interest rate is one of the highest in the Caribbean? Yeah, don't don't look at me like that. You know, it's no, 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 no. It's, 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 it's not. It's not. It is. One, it's, not yes. it, it's it's high indeed. Um, but the point I want to make to you is that. The state is not in this. This is the private sector. Why are the private sector institutions imposing such high interest rates? That's my question to you. No, the, the, <laughs> the, the, if you ask the bank, there's a question for you and the bankers. The bankers. The bankers. No, but you, but you, I'm you, saying you, have, you, the, you have bankers you, in your private you, sector. Could you convince the bankers to reduce the interest rate? The answer is no. You can't be. I can't. Maybe the government can maybe the government can and i think the government probably could sit down with the bankers and look in terms of that's a step that would be a stimulating effect in the economy it would give investors confidence want to see that things are happening i mean let me let me tell you something you think it's easy for somebody to run in a business out there i'm paying uh 10 12 15 percent interest and then after 90 days they had a stagnation and they have a three percent penalty i mean come on chris you you, you know it 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 it, it, it I begs, come back, it begs the question that's here. the private sector here. No? here we don't have a public sector here. bank in well I'm, I'm saying here. publicly i like to see the interest rate reduced here. where you want me here doing? i wrote this in our annual report when the economy is sluggish and capital expenditures lag and this is why i'm talking about the chassis the government got the latest chassis mm -hmm. right the appropriate remedy is a combination of a strong fis fiscal push through higher government expenditures, chassis again we're talking mm -hmm. about, right? Or tax cuts and the monetary stimulus provided by a central bank and actions that raise excess are. reserves. There we are. The good points again, but you said stimulus spending. Yes. Or reduce taxes. Yes. Both of them in order for to get that increased spending, once you have less tax, it means you have to borrow. So you're shifting the responsibility of borrowing from perhaps the private sector to the, um, to the state sector. Because we have to go to the banks who are averse to lending in many respects. You nearly have to have a total guarantee of whatever you want to borrow before the bank is going to lend you. Um, the bank that's is a, a serious, big, uh, that's a serious criticism it, of the it, bank. It is a fact. I think, I think what, what now I want to say, and what you mean it, <laughs> is the banks are not taking risk. Yeah, the risk of us, that's what you said. Let me, uh, let me tell you something. The banks are loaded up with the money. They let have the banks, have, let the banks, let the interest rate reduce and they got to let out. They, 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 I think they will stimulate. The thing about it is, let's, let's, let's be honest. Uh, it's not easy to get loans in a little in a down economy stimulated and let's see but you know the J japanese believe in that i mean those are big economies we know that we can't compare with yes right but Jap ja the japanese believe the europeans believe in that the americans <coughs> believe in that. could that be a failed position i don't think so i think we need to study it and see if we can you know look at it there's a talk about maybe we should have had a development bank right uh if you do a development bank, you're going to have low interest rate. You know, I well, mean, well they, development they banks do right, do right, low interest rates. Right. So, so why why is that not one of the the policy measures? The private sector should you know, be advocated. a development bank. Yes, we w the pri the private sector. And in fact, isn't it doesn't be Bihari have have um uh, merchant bank merchant bank uh, semi we yeah, are but yeah, right. but but. They're still are tying it to the risk interest rates. being risk of war and what have you. And the interest rates probably. But yes, and maybe, rates. maybe I'm not I, I don't know the interest rates of uh, that bank. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that the development bank would help to stimulate uh, I mean you you could you could go and borrow from C D B or I D B uh, for projects. But when you check the borrowing for those Chris is 1.5 million probably is the lowest among you can borrow is 1.5 million so in our in our neck of the woods that's that would be a big investment for some someone so maybe what we need to do is to structure a development bank and 
see if we can generate some kind of uh, reduced interest rates or if the banking if the banking system takes takes it down look look at look at consumer lending by the banks heavy heavy mm -hmm. you're laughing about it but it's no, heavy it no no no, it's heavy. no no it is i know no. try I to know. try and go on borrow Bank yards. Try, because <laughs> wrong what, what were you suggesting wrong focus. individuals are prepared to borrow but businesses are not prepared to borrow maybe because they realize that the turn of the money is they got turn you know a man born for car is not uh, not necessarily uh in that's not a good investment not a good you and, and what you should do stay take a minibus and stay down at no, the bottom of no, the ladder no 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 what no, should he do no what no, no, he do? no ab absolutely what not should he do? absolutely not what i'm saying is it's not an inv i think the and i would agree that it's not an investment that you could reap something back. In other words, when you sell a car, you get a depreciated value. You don't get mm -hmm. a, a profit. Mm -hmm. So the man who borrowed to open a business or do something, Chris, he looks at it, well, you gotta look at the ROI. And the ROI, when he put on the interest rate and all, it might be that he can't do it. So that's my point. You raise an interesting <coughs> question, just now, because what, either method, um, mm -hmm. reduced taxes or, or yes. stimulus spending, leads to deficit um at least reduce taxes at least in the short term at least in the short term um we have a, a topical issue now is um the wage negotiations in the public sector mm. um the usual response by every government is look you know you're gonna push us into deficit you are now advocating deficit budgeting yes mm. would you support the government um, <coughs> making awards of wage increases that lead to deficit spending. Well, the the government and I, I, I mean I'm not that's not my my big area, but I tell you the government and, area, and and the and the unions have gone into a negotiation for forty percent. The private sector. That's what the public service unions the are asking. I understand forty yes. percent increase. Right. So the the private sector. <coughs> Obviously, we'll have to follow. I'm hoping, right, that we'll be consulted in some way before. Because if the private sector got to pay that kind of increase, obviously, goods and services, everything, everything will have to match that. Because we got to get the money from somewhere. Is there room for a social contract in this? Because when the president mm -hmm. spoke in parliament, that's one of the things that he mentioned. Besides the National Economic Forum, a social yeah. contract. So you have... The government, the unions, unions and, the, and the private sector. Mm -hmm. mm. Is there room for that? We've had a model like this in Barbados, Barbados yeah. and it, it didn't do as well as we would have liked no, it to it do. Can we look at such a model, which then brings some order and stability to what you are trying to do, because you have a social contract between all the parties? Well, I I it's, <coughs> it's a bit of a paradox um, to speak of a social contract because it's, um, any party could just break it. Um, it's social, it's not, it's not legal. Yeah, yeah. But it, 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 it's a kind of understanding yes. among the key Correct. stakeholders. Yes. We've had that. I mean, Barbados has had it for yes. decades. Yes. We've talked about it. Why do you think no government wants to engage in it? You say um, President Granger talks about it. Yes. Where has it? Where has he come and said, "Look, <coughs> let's have it," and the government will make the first move? Well, to be to be but fair, if it's a partnership it's between three players, you can't just foist whatever you want. It's to not do, a eh? foist. Is is making the for a partnership means you are making you you're putting your hand out. Yes, yes. So is, is, is it not perhaps timely then? If, if Mr. Granger is truly serious, and I'm not questioning his motive at all, that he should take the lead in this social contract and define it. Well, that is the important part, the definition of what the social contract means uh, to the other partners. Certainly the private sector, but from our side, we are willing to stretch our hand too. Mm -hmm. um, are the unions going to be part and parcel? Because that is going to limit the range of what the the unions can hope to achieve. Mm. Well, it's not an easy compact. Eh? It's not easy. Um, but if 
if it is considered, <clears throat> if we don't want this adversarial relationship, yes. um, the, <clears throat> the union asks for 40% um, and produces figures to show that, look, you know, people can't live on the kind of money that's being paid. Yeah, and this yeah, is why no. this is why public servants often have to top up their income in various ways. You're so police, right. but um, teachers with their lessons, <laughs> police with, with, the, with the in traffic. That's what happens. Are we prepared to pay that kind of cost which which sets our society back because it's built on a myth of that you can you can pay these low salaries and expect to get any kind of productivity out of it. Do you honestly think the private sector pay those wages? I don't think so. What do you mean? They pay more or they pay less? They pay more. Um, and I say this because of the fact that if we were to pay the basic minimum wage, we wouldn't get anybody to work. I'm just telling you that. So, uh, so you know, they, with they, respect, with mm -hmm. respect. I know some security firms that, that even try to pay less no, than the national minimum wage. Well, that might be some, but let me just let me say that. A lot and they are private sector. Yeah, yeah, a lot of companies pay more than the minimum wage, but the this. So this does the government. So does the government. It, it's it's not that the government pays only the minimum wage. Contract workers. Hmm? No, not only the contract workers, and you know, you know, we we tend. Uh, one one hears that this commission, the Lutchman Commission, mm. is addressing this, uh, has addressed mm. the contract workers, because we know what the PPP did to disguise the the, the really high highly paid contract workers. Yes, mm. it put all the low workers yeah. in the same kind of grouping. Yeah. But but we we definitely let's let's look at the private sector and the unions. The private sector and the unions have a good relationship. I can tell you that. And we are hoping that the government underst would understand this because let me tell you, the private sector and, and the unions negotiated that 1999 strike. You remember that? Mm -hmm. That's a famous. That's a famous. That ended with right. the, uh, the um, arbitration yes, award. Yes, yes, right. Some yes. people had to run out without shoes. But anyway, <laughs> I ain't gonna say more. I, just to tell you that we are very confident that a lot of the unions meet with us, they talk with us. Uh, so we are most I could say we got a, a social contract with them. What we need is for the government to see the need to have their representatives. <coughs> and I dare say that uh, it's a breeze talking to somebody like Keith Scott because he understands some of the issues. Uh, we talk with him and we, you know, we share platforms platforms with the unions and, and, and the government and everybody. So I don't want to say that this government is averse to, to having that social con uh, co uh, contract with the, the three groupings, the union, the government mm -hmm. and the private sector. So that's, that's forthcoming. But let me, let me just uh, steal the thunder by telling you the private sector basically is looking in terms of uh, you know, we're doing a concept paper, we're doing a, a strategic forwarding plan, and there are a lot of a lot of things going on in the private sector, which you are going to hear about as we, you know. But just to, I know, I know that you you got your list there, but let me just tell you very quick that the private no, sector is the private already. sector mm -hmm. is the engine of growth in this country. And I think... Well, I'm glad you've come around to that. that. But that's a responsibility as much as a fact. That's right. Yeah, but... And, and if we don't have growth, then mm -hmm. it's the private sector. Yeah, but... At least must accept... But it comes... Si substantial part of the responsibility it, it for it. Comes Remember what you mentioned about the enabling environment. Yes, yes, right, right. yes. Mm -hmm. That is the role but of the role government. government. I ain't going so far to say the, the, the chassis. But and, and the... And, well, and it the has to be. Well, uh, yeah, right. Right. Okay, when we talked... When we talked about generating growth and when we talked about pumping money into the economy and what have you through projects that has been a, a model which has been used all the time all right but i want to get back to this business of wages mm. you i i think mr boy uh, mm. uh, as chairman and, and you obviously do um the private sector obviously does a fair amount of surveys and research are saying that the private sector does pay higher wages than the public yes. sector. I, yeah. I would say now, without a doubt. Would you, would you therefore support increases for <coughs> the public sector 
in their in their wage negotiations. Well, they are in negotiations. No, I'm asking the, if you would support it. We will, uh, we obviously, if they get more money, they'll, they'll spend in the economy. And but not but only that. But, but my question is, a negotiated wage, not, I mean, when I hear about 40%, and I realize that if that becomes the, a minimum wage <coughs> uh, into the private sector, there could be some companies that manufacture, and so they manufacture and look at their wages and, and, and the whole investment. So you don't want to have such a high wage that you can't compete then? Yes, yes, yes. But, but we would, we 40 would percent, 40 percent does take that minimum. Mm -hmm. Still, it's less than $75,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Now, is that is that an excessive amount? Uh, is, we, we talk about comparisons. Where else in the Caribbean does any worker earn less than maybe 375 US dollars a month? Where else in the Caribbean? All right. It has to be tied to some level of efficiency and removal of some of the practices that we're talking about. That I don't want to use the word corruption and uh, what have you, but you did mention um, traffic and other places. Will, it, will that stop that sort of practice? Will that lead to greater efficiency and a better level of service by our public servants? That is the issue. Well, of course, that's the response. The government is yes. uh, has a duty yes. to ensure that it runs the public <coughs> service. That's right. Um, a, a, as the private sector would run, y y you you pay a salary, you pay a reasonable salary, and you you demand good quality. Not so much because you're an employer, but because the tax-paying public deserves well, to get correct, yeah, yeah, good service yeah, 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 for the taxes yeah, that they pay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so. We are in agreement that the wages should increase, right? Similarly, that we are in agreement that the VAT should not reduce. You're in agreement that the VAT should not reduce. No, no, no. You got too much. You got a quite a lot of items on the VAT on the VAT list that is is is, is free of. Well, it's being re it's, uh, according yeah, to so the Minister of Finance today. VAT is reducing, and he explained why. Why? Because right that he is now put on are taken off um, vatable things uh, which are now non-vat mm. uh, because that helps the small man that is really the thinking yes but and so it's coming down but this this is not a bad thing this method of zero rating yes and it means that you, you talk with a small man mm. but the, the, the big man I, I hate to use that term, but it is a syndrome we have in Guyana. Yes, yes. yes. They also benefit from the from same. That, that's from correct. The same that is very correct. Mm. That and is maybe true. we need we need to have targeted um, tax measures <coughs> to, and, and targeted programs to support the low income people. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. did you recommend? <laughs> <laughs> No, we we, no, we, we, can, we, can we call him. We can call him to our interview. Yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> but, uh, no, this is fine. <laughs> but just to, just to say, the there's a lot of companies that are not <coughs> registered for VAT, and their trading is over twelve million dollars, ten million dollars. <coughs> I think they should. There's some areas that are gray areas and so that you well, could some, uh, some of the areas, and I, I am going to say this, some of these areas are not great at all. Some of these lawyers pay mm. wi on well in excess of $10 million and, and they're not registered that can for be, that. That can't be you. No, it's not. No. It's not. But I, I don't say it mm. because I feel that's tax evasion. Yeah. But the, <coughs> there's, 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 not, well, the, you know, the GRE has to do their work and we don't have a problem with that. We don't have a problem with that in the private sector. That, but there are some people that are not registered for VAT, and that is not fair to others. For example, the legitimate businesses in this country that are paying the VAT <coughs> going to find themselves they can't compete with businesses that are not paying the VAT. And the businesses that are not paying the VAT, there's no revenue. You for know, the you know, Eddie. I, I think. I, I think even more than electricity is good when we're talking formally mm. but when you talk about tax evasion the man next door to your place mm. and i don't mean it literally mm. he is thieving vat and the, when they steal vat and electricity and electricity they <laughs> are also stealing <coughs> income tax because they're not declaring mm. the income so that to me 
And sometimes I think the private sector is a little bit too hesitant because it has this thing, this this thing about tax is, is sacrosanct and say and sacred. You mustn't call for it more. But we have too much of that in this country. Mm. Now, Clyde Thomas, one of the regions, not the countries, one of the regions' best economists, um, had always been speaking about how much money we're losing in tax revenues. We're not hearing much of that anymore. We're not hearing that from the private sector either. Well, we we can only advocate what we're discussing here, that people should pay the VAT, that people should pay their taxes, and, you know... I and mean, we are not advocating not a reduction in VAT, you know. No. The government has introduced some measures where they are going to take off some things which are vatable, and um, as you said, both uh, everybody will benefit from that. Yes. Whether you're uh, uh, so low income really person. Yes. Relative. But you help the low income as well. Yes. But you also help the other man. So I don't know. Where we go? We have to, in my view, if we want to see the economy fly and we want to see higher uh, employment rates, then I think the government has a duty to pump in mm. um, <coughs> projects and money to generate growth. And you're saying the government must borrow to do that? If yes, it has to. definitely. The that's one side of the government's accounts, that's right. the, the, the revenue. What about the <coughs> expenditure side? Do you think that we have proper expenditure management? Um, uh, we, we, we focus our resources sufficiently carefully. The government spend? Yes. You, you looking at it from the private sector, do you sometimes ask yourself, but why would they do this? Why are they, why are they going on this trip and that trip? What are we getting out of it? Surely in the private sector you would be asking that question. I think some of us has asked our wives that. <laughs> <laughs> some wives has asked, you know. <laughs> but the, 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 the question of government spending, uh, obviously they have to be prudent management and the Ministry of Finance and the various ministries that have a budget. <coughs> And if they're spending the budget not to make money or not to, to develop, de deliver a service, I think the population, not the private sector, will worry about that. Not well, us only. Yes, I the agree. Par the, the but the, the, the private sector um, does pay, pay taxes. It, it looks, it, it, it has a better idea of, of hmm. budgeting and management. Hmm. So the private sector should take a lead and say to the government... Is, it, is your value for money? Are we Absolutely. getting value for the money which is being spent? And that money is what will generate a multiplier. Mm -hmm. If you're building a road, then I saw in today's paper some road that has built the last 20 years and it already br broke up within a year. Things like that, um, you know, we have to get value for our money. D does that bring us now to yeah. this question of this procurement commission? Definitely. I mean, the, here, why, why this, government, this yeah? government came on, on, on this pledge yes. about procurement commission. You're not hearing them talk about much, much about it anymore. But I understand it's one single item holding this up. Yes. Can we believe that? Why can't it be done? What's the issue? You should know. You You've know. been doing forensic audits and all this. Thing. But <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with government policy, sir. We are mm. saying, if you are talking, I mean, these things should not happen. I mean, you, you see some contracts awarded and performed so badly, and yet this, you read. That's not government policy? That's not government policy? Yes. Mm. Uh, and, and, and you read <coughs> that these people are awarded more contracts. Something is wrong. And these are all private sector people, mind you. Yeah, that's true. Members of the private sector. No, members of the private sector. sector. No, he <laughs> said private sector people. Yeah, but, but we got to define it if it's members of the commission, mm -hmm. then we got to scold them. But let me just say that wh what you're saying is right. You need transparency, definitely. And unless you get transparency, better be this government, the previous government, the next government. If you get transparency, people will, people will feel comfortable how the tax dollars are being spent. And I feel that, you know, I mean, there are some issues that you could pass. As a government, you can't see every single thing. But then, you know, people should speak out about it. 
and the uh, private sector will speak out about it. And I, I, I notice I am being prodded to speak on this um, report of the Tax Reform Committee. Hmm. Now Where is that? Eh? The, uh, it's with the Minister of Finance. That's it. It's this been submitted this. to the Minister of Finance. The, the committee has got no further direction. I would love, I am prepared mm -hmm. at any time mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. defend the recommendations of this committee. Now, you talk about water. Water, for example, being exempt. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, what about somebody who wants to have a pool? Why should that person enjoy the same kind of tax benefit? Who, who has all kinds of lights? And, and, and say, but no, we mustn't tax that, we mustn't have any VAT. In other words, VAT is supposed, you get low rates from VAT if you spread it across, it's like any taxes. The, we are we are, we we're neither targeting expenditure nor targeting income, but um, so so Mr. McLean, uh, Major General. Yes, sir. I would I would be prepared to discuss and debate if you have a program yes. or if you want to come and let's talk about the tax reform. I can get the Minister of Finance's permission because this report has been submitted to the government. We did our bit, and I want to take this opportunity to say to you, gentlemen, and to the rest of the private sector. Mm. for the great contribution you made to the formulation of that report. I think everybody... Well, we were very unsuccessful yeah. Uh, yeah. in the end result. Well, one can say we have not been yet, Not yet, not, not yet. Let's, not yet. let's wait and see. Um, but, but let's have a discussion with the private sector and other stakeholders uh, and see where we can move it forward. Well, the private sector commission Chris. could certainly sponsor... Chris, you are absolutely right, right. that we should, we should ask the we should ask the... You were in a position to do that? Yes. yes we should ask definitely. the Minister of Finance as to... What is the status, what is of, this status of this? And report. can we help but to move this and to all And definitely, I'm saying publicly that we would ask your input. As you always, you know, we, when you were the President of the Bar Association, we ask your input. So we are actually input again. You are so needed in the private sector. All right, let's, let's yes, move on. Let's yes. move on. Th there's another issue. Um, we just probably have just a couple mm. minutes. Another issue that um, we haven't been hearing much of, constitutional reform as a tool of enhanced governance. Where are we in that? And Major General, please don't tell me, you, <laughs> you can ask me. No, well, well, I should, you're a lawyer no, but, but, you and, know, and past president of the know, Bar Association. With, with, with that, Major General, I know that you, 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 that small group, that elite group, has a special place in our society now. Well, the president, president is there, you see. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the uh, president is brigadier general. I mean, after all, the Minister uh, of State, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, and they don't say retired <laughs> anymore. You, do you, they? you said elite group. Yeah, yeah. You're a part of an elite <laughs> group. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But um, let's come back. I, I saw somewhere recently there were two sides to this coin. When we are in opposition. We need that tax reform, no, no. right? Now we in government, we're not hearing anything happening. Constitutional reform, you mean? Constitutional, constitutional reform. yeah. Constitutional reform. Now I understand Nigel Hughes did something, and he submitted it to hmm. the, it was the, the, the prime minister. Prime minister, where is it? And what is holding that up? Uh, the recent time, uh, I'm, I'm recently I'm hearing that we we shouldn't touch that anymore. I don't know if that is we valid. Shouldn't. That can't be true. That can't be true? That's, but that would be a major breach of faith by this government. No, no, I, I'm not saying it's the government, but there is some talk about, you know, do we need to do that? But surely it's the government to, to take the lead on this matter. The government, the AFC, the, the APNU plus AFC made that a campaign. fundamental yeah. issue yeah. in its campaign. Yeah. But you know what is going to happen there? To, to, to win that battle, you have to cross all the stakeholders. You have to bring everybody into the fold. You cannot because two-thirds majority in the parliament, how are you going to get that when you only have one seat? You can't. But isn't that you have what, to isn't that what you talk cross the Rubicon? Referendum? Well, yes. yes but yeah. Referendum is a straight, simple majority. Yeah. Like Brexit? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. If you had to pass, some things that you, you can bypass, that two-thirds. Take mm. it straight to the referendum. Referendum. Yeah. Well, constitutional reform will have 
to come together. We, we will, I mean, Constitution is 1980, you know, and we would have to have constitutional reform sooner or later. There, there would be a what w what would be the driving force for that constitutional reform? What what's going look to get at it look at what we had under President Ramatar when we had to prorogue Parliament and yes. we had all this problem. That alone told you there is need for constitutional reform to address this particular issue. But as you said, when people get into power, they don't want con they love this constitution. <laughs> This yeah. is a beautiful constitution. Yes, yes. For, for those the in Bornham constitution was always very, very bad when we were in the opposition. Yeah. When uh, the PVP got into power, the Bornham constitution was a wonderful constitution and we didn't see any need to change it. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we are back into the same uh, mode. I don't know what we're doing. Uh, some or other we, what would we what dropped would the ball. What would eh? you suggest in terms of going forward with the constitution? Well, I, I, I think what we need the the report by Nigel Hughes that should, that be, public. should be published right. yes because that has we've spent money right. should be public published public published and, and public, public. Right. and and Good. and really debated right. and we use that as the starting right. point uh -huh. good idea if we could th these are so through the, bar, through the bar association could Nigel Hughes make that Public? No, I don't. He can. He can. No, I, 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 no, no, he's given no. it to he, his no. his remit was to, to the prime minister. To the prime minister. Okay. okay. You know, it's the same thing. It's the same thing with this code of conduct. Now, if we had a proper code of conduct, government officers having these kinds of of businesses, uh, all those things would be addressed. You know. Anyway, this is not my program. But I would say, I would say, couldn't the bar association? I mean, I'm sure Nigel Hughes is a member of the Bar Association. Could they advocate that? I don't think it would be proper. Wouldn't be proper. I think I think it's for the government to publish it. Advocate for the government like to publish it. Yes, like it. like the Minister of Finance, he he released the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, tax yeah. report. Yes, yes, that, that's how yes, it is. Yes. Gentlemen, so, mm -hmm. I want to say thank you very much, and uh, your, your implied promise to we got come this, we have There are lots of issues that absolutely, I think absolutely. We, we have to discuss absolutely. We have to openly. I see we haven't discussed the, the one of the main things, oil and gas. We, we yes. be, it might be oil well, and gas. It, it, was, it was on, but um, we, we, I, I think that is worthy of a separate uh, debate, debate, a separate debate discussion. Itself, yes. Because it touches, as, as you've said, on the, on the question of um, the environment. Well, it starts, we should be it starts with the contract. The green economy. The green economy. It starts with the contract. So, Major General, mm -hmm. retired Norman McLean. Thank you very much, sir. Chairman Eddie Boyer, Private Executive Commission. Thank you thank so you. much. Operators and viewers, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all. We'll see you next week when we will be discussing Brexit with the British High Commissioner oh dear. to Guyana. Wow. But I see he's addressing the, um, the PVP. Yes. Yes. So, good night again. Good evening to you all. Guyana, August 1st is African Emancipation Day and the African Cultural and Development Association, APNA, invites you, our family, to come celebrate African Guyanese